purpose lately. Yeah, sure <laughs> she swallowed a bug or something. Wasn't that good? Yeah. Amen. Well, take your Bibles tonight and turn to James. Um, James chapter number. <coughs> James chapter number four. <coughs> James chapter number four. You know, um, and, and I want to say this tonight. Listen, uh, in, try, in, in I don't want to say trying, but in living for the Lord, there's ups and downs. Sometimes we cause the ups and downs. Sometimes others <laughs> cause the ups and downs. Sometimes it's just things in life that cause the ups and downs. And uh, there's, there is times, there is times in our life when we're close to the Lord, and there's times in, in our life when we're not as close. Then there's times, uh, most people have had a time in their life, probably multiple times, when they weren't close to the Lord at all. And I've had those times. I've had those times in my life when I was not close to the Lord. And, uh, you know, um, uh, when you read the text here, uh, the main thought, or no, I say the main thought, one of the main thoughts in these verses, especially in verses 1 through 8, is where it says in verse 8, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. If you think about it, when you read these different uh, verses, you'll find out that the Lord is talking to them, seemingly talking uh, through James to uh, uh, the Jewish believers, telling them, uh, you need to get back close to the Lord. And, uh, you know, our life is just almost like we draw and we drift. We draw and and we drift. And, and, and you know, that, that's why we need revival in our hearts. That's why we need revival uh, in our lives. And that's why churches call revival services. That's why the pastor calls for a visiting preacher to come and have revival. That's why Crossroads has the, uh, the tent meeting, uh, Jubilee. That's why they have special meetings is because we... Uh, are we're we're just uh, we're that way we, we draw close to the lord and then we drift and so i want to preach tonight if i can on drawing and drifting this is a part of our life it's the truth amen it, you believe that's the truth tonight say amen. amen well there was a certain professor one time that believed in relativism and relativism is that there is no fixed truth in other words um he said that there's nothing you can be absolutely sure of. I mean, that's what he said. And so one of the students said, uh, he said, Lord, I never heard that in my life. You mean to tell me that there's, uh, there's no fixed truth, that there's nothing you can be absolutely sure in? And uh, the professor said, yeah. And he said, are you sure, professor? And the professor said, absolutely. <laughs> Do I need to tell that again? <laughs> Y'all starting to get it now? He said there was no absolute truth, and then he said, absolutely. Okay. Y'all wake up from y'all's days now. I thought that was pretty good, amen. I heard... Uh, uh, Brother Adrian Rogers say that he probably said it. He said it many years ago because he'd been with the Lord for several years. But I heard that one time he was on one of his broadcasts. All right, James chapter 4. Everybody at James chapter 4 say amen. Verse amen. 1. From whence cometh wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members. Ye lust and ye have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. You ask and receive not because um, you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that saith dwell in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Now, 
when we read these verses, we can see where uh, James is speaking to the brethren, and he's trying to uh, encourage them to get where they need to be. Now, I believe, that, listen, uh, I believe sometimes we need a man of God to preach this, amen. Now, if you, mean, if you need the man of God to preach this all the time to you, <laughs> then something's wrong. I heard a fellow say one time that left a church in this area. And, and this particular church, I'm not against this church. I'm for the church and the pastor. I'm not going to mention the name of it. But uh, this particular man is, uh, says he's called to preach. Then he went out and he did a little ministry. Uh, then he came back to the church that he's at now, or that he left from. And he said, I just needed to be back where I could hear a man of God preach on sin. That's what he said. And I thought, if you need the man of God to preach on sin, if you, sin, if you live right, then something's wrong. Because you've got the Holy Ghost supposedly living in your, uh, in, your, uh, in your heart, amen. And the Holy Ghost will tell you when you're doing wrong. If you need the man of God to remind you every time he preaches that sin is wrong, something messed up. Now, I want to tell you, I like to have a man of God preach on sin. But he shouldn't have to preach on it every time he gets up in the pulpit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, we find here in, in, uh, in the text here, I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about drawing nigh to the Lord and drifting away. Drawing and drifting. We all do that. Uh, some drift further than others. I will say this. Listen, you remember the message that I preached one time about drifting. Uh, you know, uh, uh, especially, and I, and I use the illustration about two men in a boat, and um, they ran out of gas out in the ocean and had boat trouble, and uh, I, and uh, they they uh, one survived and the other one didn't. And uh, you know, uh, it's amazing sometimes how far that you can drift. Right. I, I mean, the scenery can look the same, and you be miles and miles and miles away. From, from where you're supposed to be. Same way spiritually. The, listen, uh, the scenery can look the same. You, uh, you, you can stay at, uh, be in the home without leaving your wife or out leaving your husband or the child not uh, staying at home and not leaving. You can be in church and the scenery be the same. But you be uh, spiritually miles and miles away right. from where you ought to be. Listen, uh, uh, why, why do people drift? Well, uh, I think sometimes that uh, people, you know, they, 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 they put, now, let me say this. I, I want to say that it, there is security in salvation. But people sometimes uh, put uh, uh, that is a, a, a coverall or security blanket, amen. When, when they think about security, they think they're secure and, and they let their guard down. Well, I'm going to tell you, you are secure, but don't ever let your guard down, amen. And then, you know, some people just simply want to live in sin. Now, I, I have a problem with that now. When I say, like I preached this morning, uh, people want to live in sin. They want to get, they don't want to get away from it. I have a problem with that. You know, I, I'm just simply saying if a person lives in sin and <laughs> nothing's ever, uh, uh, you know, the Holy Ghost don't disturb them about that. They never have any, uh, you know, correction by the Heavenly Father. Amen. They're not His. The Bible says that he corrects his own. Amen. Right. Amen. You go without the chastisement of the Lord, the Bible said, then you're bastards and not sons. That's what the Bible says. Right. In other words, he's not your father. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of times people uh, seem like to have a problem with drifting. They, they, they're on the drift all the time. They just need the Lord. They've never been saved. Amen. And so, you know, why does it seem so hard uh, for for us sometimes to not drift. Now I, I would say that uh, you know um, uh, we're going to find out tonight that a lot of it comes from our desires, Amen. And and so uh, we can stay close if we'll stay in His Word. I believe that by word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against Thee. And the Word of God says, "Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way <laughs> by taking heed thereto according to Thy Word." And, and so the word of God can help us, amen. amen. And so we need to stay, we need to, we need to stay in the word. I would advise you, Brother Vance was telling me this. One time I was talking about getting up early and praying. You just get up 15 minutes early. You can get up 30, you can get up an hour, whatever you want to do. 
I get up an hour, but I ain't got to go do hard labor like some of y'all do. I, I, and and I, I will get up and I will read and study the Word of God, meditate upon it before I ever start out in the day. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's 30 minutes, sometimes it's 15 minutes. But I want to do that every morning, amen. amen. And, and so staying in the Word, amen. Staying in the worship. Keep attending church. Amen. I know your body gets tired. I know you get worn out sometimes, amen. But I want to say this, listen, attend church. Stay in church, amen. And then I will say this. We can stay close if we really, really want to. Talking to a young lady, the little, not the little, but the young lady you said was at quiet heart. You remember the one that you recognized was working there in the kitchen, just diligently working. I can't remember her name. And she just worked, 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 and then she stayed over after and was cleaning up. And and, and I, I said, uh, I said, you, I said, you know what? I said, I remember when you was in quiet heart. <laughs> and I said, you, you've really stayed, fa uh, stayed faithful to the Lord. And I said, you know, there's so many that's come and gone. And you know what she said? You got to want to. Amen. You got to want to. That's right. Amen. Amen. And God can change your want to if you want him to. Right. Amen. That's right. Now, I want you to look at the verses with me tonight. We're going to look down at the verses tonight. And, uh, you know, when, when we think about our desires. Now, I touched on this in another message uh, not long ago. But I, I, I feel like God would have me uh, uh, reiterate something here about drifting, amen. Uh, and I want to say tonight here in the scripture, in verse 1 and 2, our desires will cause us to drift, amen. And in verse 1 and 2, it says, From what, uh, from whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, and that war in your members? You lust and you have not, you kill and desire to have and you cannot obtain. You find it war that you have not because you ask not. If you look there in the scriptures, <clears throat> we see a person that looks more like the world than they do like Christ. You see stubbornness. You see selfishness. Selfishness. You see uh, sensuality. And, and uh, listen. Most fights come in this life because one can't get their own way. It's almost like a child. You know, you take children. They, they go to play and, and then one, uh, you take a small child and then some older ones that's not been taught, they'll go over there and just snatch it out of somebody else's hand and then you got to fight. i never forget, as uh, long as I live, i told this story several times here, Rebecca and her third birthday. i never forget it, as long as I live. Her cousin Trent was there, and uh, Trent, um, I don't know, what is he, about a year older than you? And uh, he kept he kept wanting to open one of her gifts. And, and then she, you know, she would take it from him, you know, and set it back down. And, and you know, and then he decided he, would, he, he just wanted to try to help her, you know, open her gifts. And Becca finally got fed up with it. I mean, uh. And so she reached over there. He said, I want to open this one for you. She said, no, it's my happy birthday. I'll never forget that. Never forget that. I want to tell you something. Listen here. Our desires ought to be pleasing to him. All of our, our desires ought to be pleasing to him. It, listen, the decisions that we make every day, ought not be ruled by our flesh. Right. Amen. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you something. The, the, the more time we've spent with the Lord. I told Carol yesterday, the Lord got me up by 5 o'clock. And uh, she texted me or called me or something or other. Said call her when I got a chance. So I called her. And she said, what are you doing? I said, I've been, I, I've been uh, spending, I spent about three hours with the Lord. And, and it, was just, it was just wonderful. I mean, I had spent some time with the Lord in reading uh uh, a book and in reading the word of God and praying and talking to the Lord about my family, praying for my family, praying for the church. And it was just good, you see. And, and throughout the day, I said, Lord, help me to do right today. Just remind me. And I, I you know, and, and later on that day, I was going, I was doing something and I got aggravated and I, and I, and I, I went to get frustrated and, I, and the Holy Ghost said, remember this morning? I said, Lord, thank you for reminding me. And he'll do that. He will, he will remind you. And so our desires can cause us 
to drip. Listen, not only that, but in verse 3, our prayers. Can you you ever thought that your prayers were now I drift, I, I drift away sometimes when I'm praying. I'll go to pray. Listen, uh, you know, uh, I, if I pray for Ray between now and Thursday, I, I know what'll happen. I'll say, Lord, bless Brother Ray, and me and Ray's going fishing Thursday. And I, I've done that plenty of times. You ever do that? Be praying about somebody and go thinking about something. And I'll say, Lord, help me get get back to where I'm supposed to be, you see. And, and so uh, our prayers, listen, in verse 3, he said, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. Don't ever ask you. Listen, it ain't going to do you no good to ask God if you already got plans for what you're going to do when you're asking God for something. Because he says there, you ask um, you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. Amen. That's being covetous. Amen. Yeah, you need to put in there in that prayer, God, if it be your will, you know, for me to have that. It's hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You know, um, we we had to run over to Carowinds today, and uh, we had to run over there to, for the kids. That, uh, they're, they're part of their Christmas. Their Santa Claus was Santa Claus brought them um, season pass for Carowinds, and he left me with the bill. And uh, and so, but anyway, uh, it, it, uh, his course class is going Friday. Well, we had to have proof that he had season pass, so he they had. I mean, he had to have his pass. So here we driving over there to get it, and we get over there, and it's pouring down, raining, and Carol's hoping and praying. She said, "Lord, help them not close when we get there. We didn't call it ahead of time." And and so they got there, and as soon as they got there, they closed. Uh, they were closed in. And my, and my wife probably stuck a foot in the door or a hand in the window, you know. And they got their passes. And we got in the car, and I didn't got out there in the parking lot. I didn't got comfortable. I was going to take me a nap. And then the phone's ringing. I said, where you at? I said, I'm parked in the parking lot. Well, we out of here. I said, you only been in there five minutes, and you know, I didn't get a nap. So I looked up, and there they come out of the gate. I come down there and got them. And she's praying out the, out the parking lot. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Pray, pray like a black woman. Lord, Jesus, thank you for letting it not close. Amen. And, uh, boy, I'm going to tell you what it was just, uh, I said, hallelujah, praise God. But we made it, hallelujah. But listen, when you, listen, she was thanking God afterwards. And, but, you know, you ever heard, I've heard people pray before. I mean, we used to pray in, in sports. You know, I, I thought, you know, them, them guys, they, they get on there, you know, and, and, and they do the Lord's Prayer, you know, the model prayer in the Bible, you know, our kingdom come, now we'll be done, you know. And, and I said, I told the boys, the boys that ain't getting us nowhere. I said, I'll pray. And I got out on one knee, right, I'd get out on one knee, and I'd say, Lord, in heaven, I'd pray like that at, at church. I'd say, Lord, Brother Mark, I'd say, Lord, I want you to come down on this ball field today, and I want you to enlighten us, and I want you to help us, and God, I want you to help us win. And God's thinking in the heaven, I ain't never played baseball and I don't really give a flip. <laughs> I figured that one out later on. Amen. <laughs> I wasn't even living right. I'm out there trying to call on God. <laughs> thinking, we better go back to that. Thy kingdom come. That will be done. That <laughs> might work better. Amen. I'll never forget it. I, I went down there to Harris Pensacola to help them coach. And I, and I was trying to tell them, I said, you, when you get ready to get a rebound, I said, just give a little hip check, you know, and don't walk balance and you get the rebound. And Brother Chris Wilson was standing over there looking at me. He's a principal down there. And I said, accidentally step on your foot when you jump. <laughs> he did like this. <laughs> Brother Miles, come here. He said, don't be telling them boys that. He said, we, we, need, to, we, need, to be, we need to be Christ-like. I said, really? I said, the Lord never played basketball. He don't care. He can care less who wins. I was just messing with him. You know? He said, you know what I'm talking about. I said, okay, I got it. I know to say it real quietly next time. <laughs> when you step on his foot before he jumps, you will just out jump him. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. We pray, and the boys, all I was going to say is them boys would pray. And it'd be one Christian school play another Christian school. It'd be an independent, fundamental, King James Bible school over here playing heritage, which was the same. 
And these boys over here praying for God to help them win. Them boys over there praying for God to help them win. And I'm thinking, is God sitting up there flipping a coin who he's going to pull for? No. He just wants both of them to be Christ-like. And whoever wins, wins. We can't pray for things and consume them upon our own lust. We, God, God is going to take care of your need. And every once in a while, he'll give you a world. Right. Amen. Not only that, but number three, listen, I believe not only our desires and our prayers can cause us to drip, but our relationships. You've got to be careful with your relationships. If you're not careful, you'll get entangled in the world before you know it. You know, you you know uh, everybody, and and, and, I, and I'm not preaching just at people. There's probably people in here that's going to have their kids play sports. And I'll be honest with you, I, you know, Vernon said he's going to make it to the NBA, and I told y'all that story, amen. And if he does, it'll be it'll be the Lord, amen. It'll be a miracle. We'll have to write that one down. But I'm just saying, listen, if you, listen, everybody thinks their kid is the greatest. Yeah. You know, I, I want to tell you something right now. My, now. my dad didn't think I was the greatest. But you know what he told me? You ain't, you ain't better than me. You ain't better than I was. And I didn't believe that. I did not believe that until I met his high school coach, Pete Stout. Coach Williams High School in football, Brother Mark, they came down to Shelby a few times. Shelby came up there and played them in football. I, I never believed that until his high school coach, and it made me work harder. You know, and, and, and I'll never forget, Brother Vance, the first, the very first pitcher, professional. Y'all, you know, when, you know when you have children, you know you get professional pitchers made, especially the first one. You know, sorry, Paisley, they probably hadn't made professional pitchers of you. They probably got them a canyon at home. <laughs> but I remember that, Miss Brenda. I remember that first pitcher. Nathan was laying there. He didn't even know he was in the world. <laughs> you know, about half asleep. Had a ball glove and a ball. We took pictures, you know, and give them out. Took one and gave it to Daddy. How's that boy got a ball glove in his hand instead of a Bible? Now, I'm talking about a man that played softball and basketball up to three years before he died. I kid you not. Played in the Senior Olympics in Florida. I mean, pump faking and dudes jumping, he was hitting three-pointers at 66. Could shoot the eyes out of it. Could hit a softball. He, he never ain't been. He could run as fast at 65 than he could at 25, I'm telling you. He couldn't run, but he couldn't, you couldn't hit it by him, and you couldn't throw it by him. You played baseball. But you want to know why in the world Nathan had a glove in his hand rather than a Bible. Then later on, I took Nathan to the ball field for several years, and I figured out I should have put a Bible in his hand rather than a baseball. <laughs> Probably Caleb's first picture might have had a Bible in his hand. I should have put a ball glove in his. <laughs> he, he, Caleb was the athlete. Becca was too. She was on the state championship volleyball team. Now, forget it. I've I'm, I'm gotten telling stories. I'm going to have to hear stories now. We're playing in the state championship volleyball game. And they, they, what was it? You had to win three games. The last game was the 25. So I can't remember what it was. It might have been this 15. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, we need Kristen here to correct us on this volleyball stuff. But they was playing. And look, it, they got up by 11 to 2. And it coached it like this right here. She looked down the bench. And I know what she was thinking. I'm going to put a couple of these other girls in just because we're going to win. And I did like this. You know why? You know, other parents would have said, yeah, put my cow in. Put I, have, I Listen, I, I've seen it before. I was down there, don't mess nothing up. Don't mess. They got, they, they clicking, boy, they rolling. Don't mess nothing up. Don't put her in. And I wasn't because she wasn't no good. She was as good as one of the starters. But I said, you don't need to mess this up. And she did. And they won the state championship. Hallelujah. We had a good time. But you think about all the, I never prayed for them to win. I prayed for them to act like they were some young Christians. I prayed for them to not be hurt. Amen. I'm saying, listen tonight, listen. Uh, and, and so you, you think about it. You think about it. Now, I, I didn't preach back and forth. I need to get back to that relationship. Look at verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. I don't think they was having sexual relations with each other. I think they was having relationships with people in the world 
I think they was having spiritual adultery and fornication. You can do that. You can cheat on the Lord with people in the world. Do you know that? Now I guarantee you this. I ain't trying to bring up no bad members for nobody or anything because it's happened a lot. But there's been husbands to cheat on wives and there's been wives cheat on husbands. They don't ever forget it. What every time we cheated on the Lord? Well, I'll tell you what. He might as well just quit counting on mine. But he forgive me every time. Ain't that something? Yeah. But you got to watch your relationships in this world. Before you know it, you can be involved with a group. And I'll tell you, listen. And before you know it, you have been entangled in the world and, and drift away. You see, a relationship, that is a state of affairs ex existing between those that have dealings. You got to watch it. There's a lot of things that we can be a part of, but we don't want to get entangled in it. Presley does um, gymnastics. She says, she leaves the M out a lot. Gymnastics. I do gymnastics. And if I correct her on that, she'll say gymnastics. But, and she, and, and she thinks she's good. Until we took her, if we was to take her over to Charlotte to a real gymnastics and, and let her watch them eight years, eight years over there, walk that balance beam and get a hold of that bar and do all that kind of stuff. And she, she'd stand there like this, you know. Yeah. Tell her, Paisley. Tell her she ain't no good. <laughs> Paisley goes over there. They, they, I mean, they do all, and, and Layla does too. And, and, and kids are, and I'm sure Shay's boys will be involved in some sports. She'll be rough as a cob on them. She'll throw a ball and hit them. Ruin them, like I did Nathan. Nathan wasn't standing in the batter's box. He's backing up like this. Vance, I got down laying down flat on the ground, holding his feet. I said, you ain't backing up. You standing in there. If that ball hits you, hits you. It ain't going to hurt. Not for long, anyway. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Listen here. Hey, but you got to watch those relationships. And when you, and, and I'll tell you, you know what Shay did? Shay, Shay, did you go to, you went to South Carolina, didn't you? Yeah. For about a week or two? Yeah. A month? She got out there on the ball team. She's going to walk on. Her coach transferred. Uh, you had a scholarship? Yeah. Well, oh, hello, do you do? I thought you had, how much? Mama's back there proud, boy. Mama's giving me the fingers. Two. She had two scholarships. You know what she told me? You know what she told me? She had to come back home. You know why? All them lesbians on that ball team, she said, Preacher, that's uncomfortable. I'm coming back to Grover. Mm -hmm. Had a scholarship. I'm coming home. I'm going to tell you one thing. And there's been many of them that stayed in that mess and got their lives all fouled up. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad Shay took a stand. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. That's a blessing to me. You got to watch them relationships. Then in verse 5, I need to hurry. Verse 5, he said there, Do you think that the Scripture uh, saith in vain, the Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth the envy? Your Spirit, not God's Spirit, your Spirit. Your Spirit is envious of God's Spirit. Your Spirit don't want the Spirit of God to have its way in your life. Right. Your Spirit is jealous. Your Spirit is selfish. Are you listening? Say amen, everybody. I'm going, to stay, I'm going to stay on this one for a while. Your spirit is jealous of the spirit of God. The spirit of God, this is trying to have control, but your flesh does not want it to. I'm going to tell you something. Listen, I, our spirit wants its way. Amen. It don't like the spirit. Listen, it don't like the spirit of God having control. The flesh does not like it. You know, over there in the uh, book of Galatians, I believe it is, chapter 5. Let me see if I can find that scripture real quick. It, uh, it's, it, what it says there in verse 15 and, and verse 16, Galatians 5. It said, but, uh, but uh, this I say, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. It's a continuous fight going on. And you've heard it said by old time preachers, the one you feed the most is the one that's going to win. It's like two dogs fighting. I want to tell you something. Listen here. We, listen, our flesh will cause us to drift. Our pride in verse 6. Look at verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Your pride will cause you to drift. Don't be a proud person. Now you can be proud of your children, be proud of your family, be proud of your grandchildren, all that kind of stuff. But don't have pride in your life. Me and Miss Gail, I, 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 I got to be careful. I like all the name. Me and Miss Gail. I told her this morning, I said, this one person, I've come in contact with a lot. I told Vance this one person during tip me. I said, he ain't never spoken to me. Not that he has to, but he's walked right by me. Look right at me. Look at me about two times out of the hundred times he's walked by me. Miss Gail said, hey, ain't nothing. He right by my house and don't even look. She said, he thinks he's the stuff. <laughs> oh, Lordy me. I got a word for them I can't tell you. In church, I'll tell you. After church, off the grounds, I'll tell you in the fellowship building. Let's get over there with me after, after church tonight. And I'll tell you what I think about all that. Amen. I, I'm trying to be more spiritual. I prayed God met alone. I got along with God yesterday, and I'm on cloud nine or ten somewhere up there, and I don't want to, I don't want to go down. Amen. I'm just telling you, listen, pride will mess you up. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'll I tell you one thing right now. You stay like that, God will knock the pride out of you. Oh, yeah. Now, I want to knock the pride out of a few people, but I said, I'll just leave that to the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, Proverbs 16, 18 says something about pride. Proverbs 13, 10 says something about pride. Listen, pride has to be dealt with so we can receive grace. Listen, the Bible says right there in verse 6, but God giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud. He's not going to fool with you if you got pride in your life. If you want to be an idiot and be proud, then he'll let you be that way. But everybody that will humble themselves, he'll give them more grace. Amen. I like down-to-earth people. I don't like that flutified kind of crowd. I care less for them. And, and I don't think we have nobody in here flutified. But we don't. I don't see anybody as kind of, you know. My kids used to thought, uh, they thought Carol was, then she moved in the house and we found out she was. They called her, they called her high class, high class Carol. That's because she, she just, you know, she shopped, had a bunch of nice pocketbooks and not a whole, you know, a thousand shoes. And then we came to, uh, came to live with us and I found out she had charged all that and she had, I was trying to help her pay off. I'm still trying to pay off them shoes from 10 years ago. I'm just kidding. Kind of. But anyway, look. You, know, it's, you can't go by looks. I'm telling you, you can't. Do we even have anybody in this church that has any class? You look around, I don't see none. Maybe Ken. I don't know. I know Carrie ain't got none. I hung out with him. <laughs> Brother Mark. Brother Mark, you've been on, you've come a long way, but you still you still you still got that red neck. You still got that red neck. I mean you don't let it out like Clifford does, but we know it's there. <laughs> you ain't gotta be a lot, but you gotta be around a lot. Clifford Darwin, you'll you'll know, that clip that clip more that red neck come out of him. I love him to death. Clifford Tester, you can't get a better one, I right. He's a good one. You gotta watch that pride. It'll kill you. It'll kill you. Verse 7 talks about submission. Look at it. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You having a problem? I heard a preacher say this, and I ain't never got it. Said, Oh, I can't believe it. The devil's riding my back again. It was the same old woman in his church. Said, I don't know if she was old, just the same woman all the time. Said, Oh, preacher, the devil's on my back again. He finally got tired of it and said, Take the saddle off your back. Amen. Stop providing him a place to ride. Amen. That's good. Amen. Right. Quit blaming the devil for your foolishness. Amen. That's what he was talking about. I'm telling you there in verse number seven, he said, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. If we would just resist, amen. It's sad when 
The devil has an open door in so many lives today. You know? This is so sad. So sad. Then in verse 8, it said, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. How about that? How about that? I mean, listen, submission. If you submit yourself, therefore, to God, you'll have a whole lot less chance of drifting. Amen? Now, tonight, let me encourage you. If you're not where you ought to be, all it takes is one prayer. Like I said this morning, you ain't got to pray through. It ain't like you've got to get through a bunch of Your sins are forgiven. When you ask the Lord to save you, they got all forgiven right then. All you got to do is confess who you are and what you've done. And all of it's good again. You ain't got to. Listen, them, them men that bore that, that man to see Jesus, you remember they got up and they couldn't get in the house. So they climbed up on top and they tore the roof out. You know, with no Baptist people, they'd have been fussing. They'd have been calling along. They're tearing our house up. Shooting up through there. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Them men. Listen. They they had to they had to do all that to get to Jesus. You ain't got to do all that. All you got to do is call on the name of the Lord. What was Jeremiah 33 3 say? And by the way, I was trying, I was supposed to tell y'all tonight, Miss Debbie ain't laying out. She had a situation to arise tonight. Everything's good, but just something she had to deal with. But Brother Ray, his, his life verse was Jeremiah 33, calling me, and I'll answer thee. And, and if God would have just stopped right there, it would have been enough. But he added a little bit to that. He said, call to me, and I'll answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Amen. Amen. If you catch yourself, if, 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 if you've been drifting a little bit lately, just like Brother Bobby used to tell me all the time, double up on your prayer. I call Brother Bobby, he's double up on your prayer, double up on your Just pray more. Just pray more. Ask the Lord. To, it's, it's not selfish for you to pray more for yourself. You say, well, I need to pray for my children, my wife, my husband, my grandchildren. I need to pray for my children. Yeah, but you need to pray for yourself too. Right. Don't forget that. Amen. Don't leave yourself out. It's not being selfish when you pray for yourself. Lord, help me. Amen. Lord, help me. And you know what he'll do? You know, Psalm 12, the first two words, help Lord. That's all you got to do. You know what? Peter went to walk to Jesus on the water. And what, he, what did he say? Can anybody remember what he said? Can you remember? All right, somebody look up in your Bible. Matthew 14. Hurry! What did Peter say? I cheated. Verse 30. Matthew 14, 30. You there, Janet? What is it? What's the last two words in Matthew 14, 30? The last thing. Huh? Lord, save me. That's three words. Lord, I can't count. Well, I, I, no, I did wrong. I counted, I counted wrong. Lord, save me. You said, wait a minute. Wasn't Peter already saved? He wasn't talking about being saved from his sins. He was saying, save me from this situation. Yeah. He was going down, Jack. And the Bible said when he began to sink, he didn't wait till he got up. It'd be too late. As soon as he started to sink, as soon as he, it's kind of like drifting. All you got to do is say, Lord, save me. You remember that message I preached? I still know this preacher on the internet. I mean, I got the title off there. When saved people need a saving. Every once in a while, God has saved us out of the situation. Amen. I'm telling you, listen here. And he'll help you. Amen. He'll help you. Amen. All you got to do is call on him. Amen. Amen. So, preacher, really, I mean, I, I one day I do good, and the next day I don't do as good. 
That's the Christian life. I, I'm not trying to make excuse for you, but you just need to get in the Bible more, and you need to get on your knees more. Amen. 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 That worked for me. I think it worked for everybody. Right. Amen. You said, well, that one day, I don't know what day that is. Well, every every day, do a little more for the Lord. Amen. Let's everyone stand, every head bowed, every eye closed.